All right, find the six trig values of theta. First of all, we need to know the other side. Um, it is a, you can do Pythagorean theorem or it's a Pythagorean triple. Um, it'd be an eight. Um, actually, sorry, it would be a 12, my bad. Uh, Yeah, that'd make more sense. Okay, very good. Okay, so now uh, for theta, so sine opposite, we've got 9 over the hypotenuse, which is 15. We can divide those both by 3 to get 3 fifths. Just as well, do go, go ahead and do cosecant while we're at it. It's just the reciprocal, so it'd be 5 thirds. Cosine, be adjacent over hypotenuse. Divide those both by three, four fifths. So secant would be five fourths. Tangent, opposite over adjacent, simplify three fourths. So cotangent is the reciprocal, four thirds. All right, arc tangent of positive one. So tangent, it is positive. Let's go into the first quadrant, make our triangle. So from here, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So one over one, opposite is one, adjacent is one. Ah, this must be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So therefore our reference angle is 45 degrees. It's in quadrant one, so that makes that our answer. And then in radians, that would be pi over four. Uh, number two, or 17 rather. Um, first of all, that's been rationalized. So I'm going to think of it as negative one over square root of two. Um, is cosine, it's in the negative, it's negative, so it'll be in the second quadrant. So adjacent was negative one, hypotenuse is square root of two. Ah, uh, this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle as well. So, but we're in the second quadrant. So, how far have we gone? Well, we didn't go a full 180. We stopped 45 degrees shy of a full 180, so that makes that 135 degrees. That is a fourth shy, or a, yeah, a fourth of pi shy of one. So that's three fourths pi. So secant, I'm going to think of that as one over sine. Tangent sine over cosine. So sines cancel. Minus over here, sine over cosine. So, 1 over cosine. Minus here we get sine squared over cosine, common denominator. So therefore, 1 minus sine squared over cosine. 1 minus sine squared, that's cosine squared. Over cosine. Uh, cosine squared, uh, cosine can cancel out of each of those, so we end up with just cosine of theta. Okay, um, so here we need another, I, I kind of skipped over one of our Pythagorean identities, but maybe write those down first. Probably should have done that before I did that problem. Okay, just arrived it, I didn't really talk through it, but hopefully you remember how to do that. Um, so uh, I got a little messy on my cosecant squared here. Uh, but it looks like that's what we're going to use in the numerator here, cosecant squared minus cotangent squared. So we subtract cotangent squared. That leaves us with 1 in the numerator. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. Oh, and so this then is just cosecant squared. Let's see. I might leave it right there. Verify. So... Uh, maybe tan, I'll go ahead and write as sine over cosine. This is cosine squared. 
Start with one so we can cancel out a cosine. Meanwhile, I left the right side alone. So now I end up with sine of theta times cosine of theta, and we're done. All right, so over here, sine secant, okay, so sine squared, secant would be one over cosine squared. Uh, sine and cosecant, those are reciprocal, so they multiply to just one. Sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. Tangent squared plus one, it's one of our identities up here. It's equal to secant squared. So secant squared equals secant squared. Done. Okay, so we've got to solve. So where's tangent positive? Um, so tangent is positive in the first quadrant. ASTC, so sine's positive here, tangent's positive down here, cosine's positive over there. So we're in one of these two quadrants. So opposite is square root of three, while the adjacent is one. Here the opposite would be negative square root of three, while the adjacent is negative one. And so these are 30, 60, 90 triangles. I haven't drawn it to scale, but opposite of the square root of three is 60, so we have 60 degree reference angles here and here. So in the first quadrant, that is 60 degrees. Notice they're asking in radians here, so that would be pi over 3. And then it went pi plus a third, so that's 4 thirds pi. All right, number 23, we're going to add 3 and then divide by 4. And then we have to square root, and since we square root, we have to do plus minus, which means we'll have four answers. Numerator doesn't simplify. The denominator becomes just a 2. So we're going to be in all four quadrants because it's plus minus. Opposite is square root of 3. Hypotenuse 2. So that's a 60 degree reference angle again. So in quadrant 1, that's pi over 3. When I'm in quadrant two, that's a pi minus a third. So that's two thirds pi. Quadrant three, similar to what we did on the last problem, we have pi plus a third, so that's four pi over three. And then lastly, in the fourth quadrant, I have two pi minus a third. So that's one and two thirds, otherwise known as five thirds. They didn't ask for general solutions, so those would be your answers. Here's our formula. Um, but we know our slope looks like we're adding 14, so 14 in, plus maybe our zeroth term work backwards. It would have been 50 if we went back one term, so there's your equation. Geometric. I'll just use that formula. 2 is the first term, looks like we're multiplying by negative 3 to the power of n minus 1. All right, here we're going to plug these into the calculator. Let me do that real quick. So we've got 28. Okay, so um, the mean would be 35.14. Looks like the median is 25. It doesn't tell us the mode. Range, we have the difference between 20 and 100, which is 80. Standard deviation was about 26.65. So mode's the most frequent. So I see 228s, 220s, 225s. And we do have a singleton's, which means we would use 20 
25 and 28 all as modes. All right, normal distribution. Draw the bell curve. I'll do that down here. So 18, and so every standard deviation is 3 beyond that. So 21, 24, 27 on the positive side. On the negative side, 15, 12, and 9. Remember your percents, 34%, 13.5%, 2.35%, and 0.15%. The other side is the same. So between 18 and 21, well, that was 34%. Between 12 and 18, so there's a 34, there's a 30, uh, sorry, a 13.5, let me just write these down. A 34, uh, I guess that's all we can do, it's just from 12 to 18. So, and those together, 47.5%. At least 21, at least means 21 or more. So, more than 21 includes a 13.5 a 2.35 and a 0 0.15, that's 16%. And at most, 12 means 12 or lower, so that's a 2.35 and a 0.15, making a total of 2.5%. I know we need a z-score, so we have a mean of 50. Standard deviation of 5. We end up with a grand total of, of a z score of 0. And that'd be 0, 0.0. So, 0.5 or 50%. Um, okay, three suit jackets, six shirts, eight ties, four pairs of pants. How many different? Things are there, so 3 times 6 times 8 times 4, that's the fundamental counting principle. So all we have to do is multiply those together, giving us 576. Group of 25 people running a race, top 5 finishers advance to the finals. So it doesn't matter which of the top 5 positions you are, because it's a group of people that, uh, that advances, so that's going to be a combination. Uh, there are 25 people running. Five of them get to advance, so it's a 25C. We can do this on the calculator, 25C5, uh, giving us an answer of 53,130. Teacher has a box of pencils in the desk drawer. Two orange, eight red, six green, four blue. So that's 20 total. Green or blue. So we can split this into two different problems. Probability of green, uh, 6 out of the 20 are green. Blue, 4 out of the 20. There is no overlap. They are either green or blue. They can't be both. So they're not counted twice. So we can add those together for a total of 10 out of the 20. So half or 50% um, would be the probability. If it said odds, it says or here. So that's your probability. The odds would be one to one. One time you'll get green or blue, one time you won't. 